What causes gynecologic cancers? Uh, unfortunately, most women don't realize that age has a lot to do with it, and the older we get, the greater the risk. So um, that's one factor. Others include being overweight or obese. And in case of cervical cancer, a type of a virus called HPV is associated with increased risk of developing that cancer. What should I do to maintain gynecologic health? We recommend that women continue to follow with their physicians and other health care providers regularly and get appropriate recommendations from those individuals on regular screening. It is also very important to continue to follow through after menopause as that is when the risk of cancer actually increases significantly. What can I do to avoid developing gynecologic cancer? That's a great question and it is really one that should empower every woman. Exercising regularly, eating healthy, um, the obvious recommendations that our government has made to us, um, and also accepting vaccine for young women will decrease the risk of many cancers. Regular screening is also obviously recommended. What are the early warning signs of gynecologic cancer? I think before I get into the warning signs, um, I really would like to um, stress that it's very important for women to listen to their bodies. Um, most women are very tuned in to their normal patterns of daily living and if there's any deviation that persists, um, and that, that includes a number of symptoms which I'll address in a second, but basically any changes in, that are persistent are something that really should be brought to a, the attention of a healthcare professional. These include abnormal bleeding, bleeding between periods, bleeding after a woman's gone through menopause, bleeding after intercourse, those will be signs and symptoms potentially of cancers involving the vulva, vagina, cervix, or uterus. For ovarian, primary peritoneal, and fallopian tube cancers, the symptoms can be much more nonspecific and therefore may not really cause the women to be concerned. But if they persist, they really should be investigated. And these include abdominal bloating, pelvic pressure or pain, presence of a mass, or even urinary symptoms. And so uh, please listen to your body and again, bring any concerns to the attention of your healthcare professional. Do certain kinds of cancer run in families? We know that in ovarian cancer, fallopian tube, and primary peritoneal, about 10% of these cancers are associated with familial risk. And that means that the individual may be carrying a specific gene that predisposes or makes them more at risk to develop this particular cancer. It is very important to know one's family history because similar situation can also occur in endometrial cancer, that is uterine cancer. And in those circumstances, some women who have particularly family history of colon cancer may actually be at increased risk for both endometrial and ovarian cancers. So again, family history is really an important clue as to what a person may be at risk for, and it is very, very important for both the patient as well as their healthcare provider to be aware of this and perhaps offer genetic testing or genetic counseling and genetic testing. What is the HPV vaccine and should I consider getting it? HPV stands for human papillomavirus, and it's an abbreviation for actually a group of more than 100 viruses that can be sexually transmitted or transmitted through intercourse um, or other modes of sexual activity that will result in an increased risk of developing either precancerous or cancerous lesion of the vulva, vagina, or cervix. And it is absolutely critical that every woman be aware of this condition and that she take steps, if at all possible, to prevent them. And those steps include basically receiving the vaccine prior to initiating sexual activity, but being sexually active doesn't preclude women from receiving the vaccine regardless. Um, obviously, it's most effective when a uh, vaccine is administered prior to initiation of sexual activity. In addition to that, um, regular screening with pap smears is, continues to be important because vaccines that currently exist protect only against a small group of viruses. They do protect against some of the riskier types. However, they do not protect against all. And then finally, it's always continues to be important to use condoms when being sexually active unless you settled with a single partner. Is the HPV vaccine safe? That's a great question and it's something that we get asked all the time. 
The vaccine has been around for quite some time and has been extensively studied and shown to be safe in administration. Additionally, a second vaccine was recently approved and it is now also approved for the use in boys. The prevention of precancerous and cancerous conditions is absolutely critical in women because it, these conditions can lead to issues related to fertility or even potentially holding a pregnancy once a woman does conceive. So I would overwhelmingly support its use. Obviously, it is important to consider continuing to use um, condoms and routine screening in addition to the vaccines. Are there any new developments in the treatment of gynecologic cancers? There's ongoing research really throughout the United States and obviously the world. The United States has a very strong consortium called Gynecologic Oncology Group where multiple groups work together to find answers to improve treatment, minimize side effects, and ensure improved survival. Well, I've been a gynecologic oncologist for more than 20 years, and this is the most exciting time of my career. We are able to perform surgery uh, with minimally invasive approaches where patients now, instead of being in the hospital for five to seven days, are going home in 24 or 48 hours, and are returning back to work very quickly, um, back to their normal activities and their life. We also have the availability of stereotactic radiation, which minimizes side effects and maximizes the delivery of treatment to the appropriate area. We're much more astute in uh, early diagnosis and early intervention, so uh, women have much better chance of having their cancer detected early, which of course uh, translates to a better prognosis. We are much better at delivering chemotherapy and minimizing side effects, so many of our patients actually continue to work full-time while receiving chemotherapy, and that obviously translates into much less emotional trauma and scarring from this experience. And then finally, Utilizing genomics, which is a study of the actual tumor imprint to individualized therapy, is very, very exciting. We hope in the future that we will have a vaccine for ovarian cancer treatment and that it's already in development. What factors influence the prognosis for a person with gynecologic cancer? I always tell women when we talk about this that it is absolutely critical that the first treatment be the right treatment. And the right treatment can really be delivered only by a gynecologic oncologist. We are individuals who are very intensely, specifically trained to take care of women with gynecologic cancer. We're able to determine what is the best form of therapy and engage appropriate individuals, including radiation oncologists or medical oncologists, to deliver that treatment with us. What about natural supplements as a treatment or as a preventive measure? I'd like to separate that question into two parts. During treatment, I would recommend very strongly that no medication be taken um, or any supplements be taken without discussing it with the physician who is prescribing the treatment because some of these medications and supplements can, in fact, affect the efficacy of the treatment that's being delivered, which obviously would be counterproductive. Um, I also recommend that all of us be very sensitive to the fact that none of these supplements are regulated by FDA and that in fact some have been associated with long-term harm. So please, if you're going to use natural supplements, be aware of that and be sure that you investigate what is it that you're taking and what potential side effects it may be associated with. In general, it sounds like a very simple thing, but I really recommend healthy living, balanced diet and exercise, and that, in all honesty, is the best way to a long, healthy life. Where can I go for more information about women's cancers? Well, you're certainly welcome to visit our website at winthrop.org, or you can call our help desk at 1-866-WINTHROP. In addition, you can certainly reach out to national organizations. A WebMD would be one, American Cancer Society would be another, and specifically for gynecologic cancers, Women's Cancer Network at WCN.org.